okay so this is the section 2 which is compound interest and uh, the difference between simple interest it is uh, like when you uh, invest an amount into the bank uh, you withdraw your interest every month for example you deposit hundred dollars uh, your principal amount is hundred dollar you invest it into the bank for let's say 10 years every year you withdraw your interest so after 10 years you can withdraw your principal amount hundred but in compound interest what we do we don't withdraw our uh, interest and we reinvest our interest for example uh, if bank is offering you let's say 10 percent interest per year then after one year your principal amount would be uh, raised to 110 that would be your principal amount after one year but you don't withdraw your interest which is 10 you reinvest your interest after next year you will get interest 10 percent on your new principal amount which is 110 this is called compound interest and uh, you can get more return as compared to simple interest so this is the basic definition of compound interest okay so <clears throat> we will study the compute uh, sorry uh, we will able to compute the continuous compound interest as well here and uh, here you can see that the details which we have already discussed uh, unlike simple interest compound interest on an amount accumulates as faster rate than simple interest the basic idea is that after the first interest period the amount of the interest is added to the principal amount and then interest is computed on this higher principle uh, the latest computed interest is then added to the increased principal and then interest is calculated again this process is completed over a certain number of compounding periods like this is compounding periods which we were talking about like you will be given in any problem or in every problem you will be given compounding periods and that is how we will come to know uh, that this is a problem of simple interest or compound interest the result is much faster growth of the money than a simple interest would yield so here a very simple example we will discuss each aspect of this example for example uh, suppose a principal of dollar one was invested so the principal amount we always denote principal amount by p so dollar one was invested in an account paying six percent annual interest so r is your six percent compounded monthly this is very important statement now i uh, need your attention compounded monthly it means that m is 12 in 12 in one year there are 12 months okay so uh, here the form the interest is further categorize it in this form r by m what is r r is interest rate r is interest rate and m is compounding periods per year so i will denote your interest r is the interest rate so uh, sorry i is also interest rate which is further categorized in r by m form so r is 6% m is 12 so which is 0.5% so i is 0.5% compounded monthly how much would be in the account after one year so we will express time in, as we discussed in simple interest we always express time in number of years so here we are given already one year so t is one and the formula for compound interest uh, here in the book they are denoting compound interest by a but we just to differentiate we denote it by s so the formula for compound interest will be one plus r by m raised to power m times t so m is compounding periods so m is compounding periods r is given interest rate and uh, p is your principal amount okay so here this is just a derivation of the formula we can just skip it and uh, we can jump into this
this formula as i said in the book they are denoting it by a uh, we can denote it by s just to differentiate because in simple interest we have denoted uh, the total interest by a n represents a uh, number of compounding periods like m cross t n is m cross t and i is r by n so the in short form we can write the formula in this form where i is r by n we have already discussed what is r what is m and also we have discussed what is m cross t so here you can see that i is r by m a is the amount at the end of n periods p is the principal amount r is the interest rate nominal interest rate m is the number of compounding period per year i is the rate per compounding period and t is the total number of compounding periods for example here we solve one more example find the amount to which dollar 15% will grow if compounded quarterly compounded quarterly so first of all n is 4 quarterly there are 4 quarters per year at the rate of 6.75% r is 6.75% number of years there are 10 number of years the principal amount which we want to grow over 10 years at the rate of 6.75% compounded quarterly is 1500 so the formula is s equals to p 1 plus r by m raised to power m cross t so we can substitute the values 1500 1 plus 6.75 percent divided by 4 raised to power 4 times 10 so if you solve this you will get the total amount like this so be sure to do the arithmetic using the rules or the order of operations what does it mean first of all solve this portion after solving this portion add it into 1 then take its power 40 and after this multiplying it with 1500 this is the correct order and don't skip any step doing this arithmetic so using the simple interest formula if we use the simple interest formula for the same problem over a is this which is more than dollar 400 which is more than dollar 400 less than the amount earned using the compound interest in compound interest our amount was 2902.5 you can see if we apply simple interest we get less interest but if we use compound interest we get more interest so here you can see that uh, if we increase the compounding periods look at here before m was 4 quarterly before m was 4 now m is 365 you can see that it increases even more it increases even more so what does it mean uh, compound interest give us more interest as compared to simple interest and furthermore in com compound interest if we increase the compounding period it give us even more interest so if the number of compounding periods per year is increased while a principal amount or annual rate interest remains same the future amount of money will increase slightly so <laughs> Here we solve one more example. Suppose a house that was worth $68,000 in 1987 is worth dollar this in 2004, assuming a constant rate of inflation from 87 to 204. What is the inflation rate? We need to find what is R. The principal amount was 68000 and it grows up till 104000 in how many years from 87 to 204 13 and uh, around 17 in 17 years uh, we are not given any compounding period so it means annually so we will assume m is 1 if you do so you can see that uh, s is 104 p is 68000 or we need to calculate number of years are 17 so here you can take the power uh, 17th root if you take the 17th root here if i take 1 by 17 on both sides 1 by 17 this 17 will cancel out with this 17 you will get 1 plus r you can solve it very easily on the calculator move this one to the other side you will get r equals to 20 uh, 2.5 percent 
if the inflation rate remains the same for the next 10 years if we say the inflation rate which we got around i think uh, 25 percent or 2.5 percent i'm not sure you will see uh, if the inflation rate remains the same for the next 10 years again t is 10 years what will the house be worth in 2014 so the principal amount would be 108 was in 2004 uh, thousand something like that and we want to know after 10 years what would be its worth so uh, sorry from 2014 if we assume it from 2014 then we can substitute t27 10 more years but here if we write 108 if we write 108000 for next 10 years then here we will write 17 and you will get same result in both cases so this is compound interest how long will it take dollar 5000 to grow now we want to know t times of 15000 if the money is invested at the rate of 8.5% compounded quarterly compounded quarterly means m is for how long t we want to know for dollar 5000 principal amount is 5000 how much time will take this 5000 to grow to 15,000 in uh, how much time will it take t we need to find compounded quarterly so the formula is s again 1 plus r by m raised to power m cross t so s is 15,000 p is 5,000 1 plus r we are given 8.5 Five percent divided by m is 4 raised to power m cross t m is 4 so when you solve this you will get uh, you will get uh, 3 equals to 1 plus 8.5 percent divided by 4 4 cross t and from here you can take natural log uh, I explain it here Natural log means there are three, four very famous properties of logarithm. Log of a times b equals to log of a plus log of b. This is called natural log and log of ln of e is 1. You can check it in your calculators. Log of e is 1. Similarly, log of a raised to power b, b comes first and it comes log of a. To bring down any power we use logarithm we need to find t we need to find this t so we apply logarithm on both sides we take log here and log here it will become ln of 3 it will become ln of this this is this is your let's say a and this is your b we apply this property this b will come down here you can see that this 4t is now here and we left with ln of 1.02 now we can divide both sides with ln of 1.02 and we can n plus 4 and from here we can get t this is a very simple arithmetic if you don't understand it we can discuss it tomorrow in a live tutorial so we were discussing compounded daily monthly like actually the formula of compound interest is 1 plus r by m raised to power n cos t so if it is annually m is 1 if it is semi annually m is 2 if it is quarterly then m is 4 if it is monthly then m is 12 if it is daily then m is 360 or 365 so if we keep increasing m let's say after every hour after every week after every second this m will keep increasing so m will in goes to infinity so in that case there is a formula if this formula will take the form e is to power it i is interest rate and t is number of years so this is the formula for compound interest continuous and here i would mention one thing very important student always make this mistake 
you will use compound interest continuous formula only when you have this word continuous in the statement if you see this word continuous in the statement then you will use compound interest continuous formula otherwise you will not use compound interest continuous formula so this is the formula sorry i wrote i it is r interest rate so a equals to p times r times e raised to power r times t what amount will an account have after 10 years you can see compounded continuously compounded continuously so we will use we will not have second thought so we can immediately use compound interest continuous formula so p is uh, here in that case principal amount is 1500 e raised to power r r is 6.75 percent t is 10 so here you can get compound interest continuous which is 2946 and here one thing which is very interesting uh, this is the same example which we used in simple interest when we computed simple interest we got 2500 something when we used compound interest quarterly it was 2900 something then we used compound interest uh, i think daily then it was 2900 something uh, 45 or around that or maybe more than this uh, yeah i think 45 now we are using compound interest continuous so it is even more but a slight more not very huge difference so uh, next is annual percentage yield the simple interest rate that will produce the same amount as given the compound interest rate in one year is called the annual percentage yield to find the APY we will call it APY this is called the effective rate like uh, what would be the effective rate or what rate should we choose uh, to invest the money uh, there is a very interesting example through which we, we understand what is the application of annual percentage yield we called it APY, R is what we have discussed before, M is the same thing, this M is also the same thing, minus 1. So we will know how to calculate APY. What is the annual percentage yield for a money that is invested at the rate of 6% compounded monthly? We are given compounded monthly. Uh, so M is 12, annual percentage yield invested 6%. So R is 6% here we can apply the formula so the effective rate is 6.16 actual the workable rate is 6.16 this is called APY very simple formula we can you if you did not get the idea we can discuss it in live tutorial but the calculation is very simple what is the annual nominal rate compounded monthly for CD that has an annual percentage yield 5.16 nine percent so we are given apy we need to actually calculate here the interest rate so these are the procedure which step you need to follow you need to apply first so here you can go through from this very easily